eternal Father of mercy and compassion, be with us in this presentation in Jesus' name. Amen. I greet you all in the name of Jesus all over the world, wherever you are. My name is Kudzai Chikokura, your host, and this is the Herald Report. We are ever grateful and thankful for this opportunity which God has given us. Therefore, brothers and sisters, I welcome you in a very special way to this segment as we are looking at watching and waiting. Too busy to be involved, the cost of delay. Basically, it has been our prayer day today, and we are coming to the close of this day. And I just want to uh, us to focus on... Uh, what the Bible says regarding watching and waiting. I've been thinking about this since morning and I've been meditating and then I started writing something. This is what I'm sharing uh, with you. My life had been very busy of late and this week I actually decided that I will not be busy. I decided to leave some of the things and focus on just few things which are critical, which I may not be able to do without. And I've actually realized that there is a great blessing. I will not be able to achieve all the things in the world. I can only do as much as I can and the rest can actually be dealt with tomorrow. Now, the Bible says in the book of uh, Luke chapter 12, verse 37, Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Very I say unto you, that he shall give himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and save them. And if they shall come in this, if he shall come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them also, Blessed are those servants. So now the people are waiting for Jesus Christ. They, they, or the servants are waiting for their master and there is a delay. But Jesus said, blessed are those servants which keep watching. But now how would the servant be watching? What would the servant be doing while he is waiting for the watching? What is associated with watching? Let's actually go to the book of uh, Luke chapter 3, 2039. And this norm. That if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Be ye therefore ready also for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when you think not. Now we are told here that there is a good man. The good man has a house. The good man has goods. The good man is busy. The good man has many things to do. But the good man decide to prioritize to look after his house in case a thief who break in. Brothers and sisters, the Bible is saying to us, or oh, the lesson I'm getting here is that we need to set our priorities right. There are things which are more important than the other. Jesus then addressed the same subject using the parable. Now look at this parable in Mark chapter 13, 28. Now learn a parable of a fig tree when her branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves. You know that summer is nigh. So ye in like manner when you shall see these things come to pass, know that it is near even at the door. Very I say unto you that this generation shall not pass till all these things be done. Now look at verse 31. Heaven and earth may pass. Heaven and earth shall, they shall pass away. But my ways shall not pass away. But of that day, in that hour, Knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Take heed, take ye heed, watch and pray, for ye know not what the time is. How am I going to watch? Am I going to sit down just my eyes open? Brothers and sisters, watching is doing something. We are anticipating the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is a possibility that there will be a delay in his coming. Or he has delayed in his coming as some may say, as, uh, according to Peter, they will say, slack, they will use the term slackness. But brothers and sisters, it is at that time that we should actually continue to endure patiently because that time will definitely be fulfilled. Now verse 34, the Bible says, For the Son of Man, is as a man taking a far journey who left his house and gave authority to his servant and to every man his work and command the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh even at even or at midnight or at the cock crowing or in the morning. Brothers and sisters, any time our master may return, any time, Jesus can return. Therefore, we should not be caught off guard, but we should be doing those things which we are supposed to be doing as the children of God. We have no time to look down. 
We have no time to slumber. We have no time to sleep. We should be watching continuously as the children of God. But the question still remains, what exactly should I be doing watching? I'll come to that shortly. Now verse 36, less coming suddenly. He finds you sleeping, and what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. So, there is a possibility that you sleep. Now, the question is, what do you do when you are sleeping? Is this literal sleeping or something else? We are going to talk about literal sleeping later on, but I'm going to address another sleeping before I go to literal sleeping. But let me ask this question once more. How do I watch? What will I be doing while I'm watching? What activities are involved in watching? What could happen if I'm not watching? Brothers and sisters, it's important to understand that Jesus is in the most holy place. And the next event when Jesus is, has finished the task of the most holy place is the close of probation. And when Jesus closes his probation, his probation is going to close suddenly to all those who are not watching. It says uh, in pamphlets, uh, page uh, uh, 13 paragraph 2 this is pamphlet 98 probation closes Christ sees Christ's intercession sees in heaven and it is finally sudden upon all and those who have neglected the purification of their souls by obeying the truth are found sleeping so if we have neglected purification if we have neglected preparing we will be like sleeping servants. We will definitely be found sleeping when it's too late. Now it says, they become weary of waiting and watching. They become indifferent in regard to the coming of their master. They long for, not for, for his appearing and thought there was no need of such continued persevering watching. In other words, because of the delay, they became tired because of the delay. They thought it would not happen because of the delay. They decided to go and focus on other things. Brothers and sisters, I think of those guys who used to preach about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now they have stopped. I think of my colleagues. We have walked together in this journey, but they are tired because of the cares of this world and their attention is now focusing on something else. It says uh, they had been disappointed in their expectation and might be again. I remember this gentleman preaching will say within the next two years, Jesus will come. But unfortunately, now it's over 30 years, brothers and sisters. It's over 25 years. Jesus has not come. They preach with the power. They preach with the zeal. Say in two years, something is going to happen. But brothers and sisters, lo and behold, nothing has happened. You know, when hope has delayed, the hearts become weary because the hope has delayed. Now he said they concluded there was time enough yet to arouse. They would be sure and not lose the opportunity of securing an earthly treasure. In other words, they left what they were doing and they focused on acquiring an earthly treasure. I remember this gentleman, very interesting, we used to preach together. And then he said, listen, don't hope to go and walk in the streets of gold in heaven before you touch a bar of gold here on earth. First, you need to touch a bar of gold here on earth. So they will leave the preaching of the gospel. They will leave focusing. They will leave watching. They will leave waiting. And they will go to look for a bar of gold. Brothers and sisters, he said, it will be safe to get all of this world they could. It will be safe to get all of this world they could. And in securing this object, they lost all anxiety and interest in the appearing of their master. And what will happen? He will come suddenly. It says uh, they, they become indifferent and careless as though his coming was yet in distance. While their interests are buried up in the worldly gains, they wake they were closed in the heavenly sanctuary and they were unprepared. If they had only known that the work of Christ is in the sanctuary would close so soon, how differently would they have conducted? How earnestly would they have, have watched? 
the master anticipated all this and gave them timely warning in the command to watch. But however, they thought there was more time. Because there was more time, they, because they thought there was more time, they went and they were involved in many other things. And they failed to prepare. But there is another group, brothers and sisters, of those people who are waiting for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And inspiration says that in Testimony Volume 2, in fact, it's a continuous quotation from the previous one. It says, a company was presented before me in contrast to the one described. They were waiting and watching. Their eyes were directed heavenward and their words and the words of their master were upon their lips. So what was the words upon their lips? What I say unto you, I say unto all, watch, watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh at even or at midday or at the croaking or in the morning, lest come suddenly he finds you sleeping. So these ones, they had an understanding of the words of the master and they kept watching, they were watching intently, they were watching closely, it says, the Lord intimates a delay before the morning finally dawns, but he would not have them give away to weariness, nor relax their earnest watchfulness, because the morning does not come upon them as soon as they expect. They waiting ones were represented to me as looking upward. They were encouraging one another by repeating these words. The first, the second watch are past. We are in the third watch, waiting and watching for the master's return. So they are waiting anxiously. They are waiting patiently. They are remaining consistently. But now it says there remains but a little period of watching now. I saw some becoming weary. Their eyes were directed downward and they were engrossed with the earthly things and were unfaithful in watching. Brothers and sisters, this is a group in church. They are waiting for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. They are involved in the things that give glory to God. But however, some began to become weary of waiting, weary of watching. Brothers and sisters, let this not happen to you, that you become so engrossed with the cares of this world that you think that it's better for you to be engaged in that. Brothers and sisters, many of us have made a decision before. Many of us have decided to walk with God. But as time passes, as things happen not according to our own desire, we realize that what we waited for is taking too long. We become so weary and fail to realize that at that juncture, Jesus may leave the most holy place. He says, uh, so they, he says, there remains but a little period of watching now. And these people become weary and they started going to do those things they used to before. Brothers and sisters, there are duties that we should be associated with. And when we associate ourselves with those duties, we will not be weary, but we keep on watching. It says, they were saying, in the first watch we expect our master, but we're disappointed. We thought surely he would come in the second watch, but that passed, and he come not. We may be again disappointed, we need not be so particular. He may not come in the following watch. We are in the third watch and now we think it best to lay up our treasures on earth that we may be secure against want. Many were sleeping stupefied with the cares of this life and allured by the deceit deceitfulness of riches for, from their waiting, watching position. Brothers and sisters, I'm talking to myself as I'm talking to you. God has called us for such a time as this. We have no time to lose. At an unexpected time, probation will close. At an unexpected time, we realize that we realize that we have lost the greatest opportunity because of the cares of this world. The question is, are the cares of this world taking more time? 
are the cares of this world taking the quality time which only God should have? How often do we go for prayer meeting? How often do we go for prayer retreats to for camp meeting? How often do we go for evangelism? Have we become so busy thinking of money? My brothers and sisters, let me be honest with you. The cares of this world will remain there. We will always be busy. The devil will make you busy throughout the day. I've actually come to this realization this week. I say to myself, I'm too busy. For that reason, I'm going to stop doing some of the things which I'm doing and focus on those things which cannot wait until tomorrow. Brothers and sisters, there is a great cost in failing to watch. There is a great cost in failing to prioritize our lives. I think of the disciples. They failed to watch with Jesus Christ. When Jesus is saying watch, he is saying be involved. He is saying do those things which give glory and honor to God. He is saying do those things which will help you to remain on course while you are waiting. You know, the Bible says regarding the disciples in the book of Luke chapter 9, verse 28, and it come to pass about an eight day, about an eight days after this sayings, he took Peter, John, and James and went up into the mountain to pray. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistering. This is Jesus praying. The remnant become white and glistering as he was praying. The Bible says, And behold, they talked with him two, two men, which were Moses and Elias, who appeared in glory and spake of his decease, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. But Peter and them that were with him were heavy with sleeping. And when they were awake, they saw his glory and the two men that stood with him. Now, this is a very special moment. The special moment is that Jesus had come to pray with his disciples. It's a moment of watching. It's a moment of praying. But the Bible says the disciples slept. Instead of watching and praying, they slept. Now, the question is, what did they benefit from sleeping? How much did they lose because of sleeping? Brothers and sisters, this was a great opportunity, but uh, because of sleeping, the most important opportunity was loss. Desire of Ages, page 245 says, Through, Though being overcome with sleeping, the disciples had little, had little of what passed between Christ and the heavenly messengers. Failing to watch and pray, they had not received that which God desired to give them. A knowledge of the suffering of Christ and the glory that should follow. They lost the blessing that might have been theirs through sharing his self-sacrifice. Slow of heart to believe were these disciples little appreciative of the treasure which, with which heaven sought to enrich them. So there was something special which heaven had prepared for them. But however... Because they slept, because they failed to watch and pray, they failed to re realize this important thing which God had prepared for them. But however, sleeping was a norm for the disciples when they go for prayer. Just like many of us today. Today, many of us, we have actually stopped going for all night prayers. We have stopped going for half night prayers. We do not have time. The time of prayer has been engrossed by many different activities. Now, Luke chapter 22 from verse 14, the Bible, 44, the Bible says, And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as it were the great drops of blood falling down to the ground. This is Jesus praying. And while he was doing this, brothers and sisters, verse 45, the Bible says, And when he rose up from prayer and come to his disciples, he found them sleeping. This is what happens when we don't set our priorities right. Brothers and sisters, there is nothing as important as watching and praying. There is nothing as important as spending only an hour with Jesus Christ. 
because it is in spending time with Jesus Christ that we are fortified against the old temptations. It is in spending time with Jesus Christ that we are empowered to be able to live or to be able to overcome or to be able to stand in the hour of temptation. Now let's actually go to the same verse but from Matthew chapter 26 verse 40 which I was uh, studying this morning. And he come unto the disciples and find them sleeping and saith unto them to Peter, what could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you end anointed with temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. So he's saying to the disciples, primarily to Peter, watch and pray. You said you are not going to run away. You said you are prepared to die with me. This is now the opportunity and the best way for you to die with me. Then watch and pray because if you don't watch and pray, be rest assured you enter into temptation. Verse 42, he went away again the second time and prayed saying, Oh Father, if this cup may not pass away from me except I drink it, Thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again. And their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. So what happened? They were tired. What made them to be tired? Thinking about the cares of this world. They did not put real value to what Jesus was saying. They neglected the necessary preparation. They slept when they were to be watching. Brothers and sisters, we need to watch and pray. We need to sit down and scale down on some of the activities which we are involved in and focus on these things which are important. Just say to yourself, if you die today, who is going to be doing the activities we are doing? And then you say to yourself, can these activities wait until I finish with my God? Don't be in a rush for anything that does not kill your life. Don't be in a rush for anything that does not pay you enough. Don't be in a rush for anything that does not help you to secure eternal salvation. It says, but instead of watching with Christ, that's uh, testimonies to me, uh, volume 2, page 204. Instead of watching with Christ, they were burdened with sorrow and fell asleep. So what affected them was sorrow. It was that very day when Jesus preached John chapter 14 to them. Let not your hearts be troubled. But they were burdened with sorrow. Brothers and sisters. Are we burdened with the cares of this world? I think where will I get the school fees for my kids? Where will I get money to repair my car? Where will I get money to do one or two things? Where will I get this? Where will I get that? Where will I get this? And it says they were burdened with sorrow and they fell and fell asleep. Even the ardent Peter, who only a few hours before he declared that he would suffer and if need be die for the Lord, was asleep at the most critical moment when the Son of God was needed, was in need of their sympathy and heartfelt prayers, they were found asleep. Brothers and sisters, at this critical time, when Jesus is about to leave the most holy place, in this critical time, in this critical time, when probation is about to close, in this critical time, when we know, don't know our tomorrow, today is a day, brothers and sisters, we cannot afford to sleep. Says they lost much by that sleeping. Our Savior designed to fortify them for the severe test of their faith, to which they would soon be subjected. They, if they had spent that mournful period in watching with their dear Savior, and in prayer to God, Peter would not have been left to his own feeble strength to deny his Lord in the time of trial. But what happened? They slept. Now this quotation is very interesting, brothers and sisters. It said, the Son of God went away the second time and praying, saying, Oh, my Father, if, it, if this cup may not pass away 
from me except I drink it. Thy will be done. And again he came to his disciples and found them sleeping. Their eyes were heavy, but this sleeping, by this sleeping, disciples, is represented a sleeping church when the day of God's visitation is now. It is a time of clouds and thick darkness when to be found asleep is most per perilous. Brothers and sisters, are we sleeping? Because the church of God is sleeping. Are you sleeping as well? The activities that you are involved in helps you to know that you are sleeping. The way how you are looking for money helps you to know that you are sleeping. The way that you are chasing the things of this world helps you to know that you are sleeping. The way how you are chasing the fashion, the way you are chasing the cars, the sacrifice we make for God, this helps us to know how that we are sleeping or not. It says, Jesus left us with a warning. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh at even, or at midnight, or at the cock croaking, or in the morning, lest coming suddenly ye find you sleeping. The church of God is required to fulfill her night watch, however perilous. In other words, brothers and sisters, this is where I want us to understand. We are expected or we are required to fulfill our night watch however perilous things may be whether long or short sorrow is no excuse for her to be less watchful tribulation should not lead her lead to carelessness but to double vigilance brothers and sisters i say to myself i want to be busy I want to do many things, but what's so special? What's important? If I cannot have any excuse for watching and waiting, why then should I not watch and wait? And Jesus will sort the rest by his power through me. It says, Christ has directed the church by his own example to the source of their strength in times of need distress and peril the attitude of watching is to designate the church as god's people indeed by this sign the waiting ones are distinguished from the world and show that they are pilgrims and strangers upon the earth that's testimony volume 2 page 205 brothers and sisters we are strangers we are pilgrims we are not going to take anything with us. We are going to leave everything here on earth. Of recently, I've been preaching about the war with, of Israel with Hamas. As we've been watching what is happening in Palestine, they are in Gaza, they are destroying almost everything. People have been watching, people have been working very hard to build those buildings, and now there is not, nothing has remained. Brothers and sisters, is it worth it for me to lose my life in chess of a dollar? To lose my life in chess of things which are temporary? Brothers and sisters, we need to watch and wait and work while we are waiting for Jesus Christ to come. Jesus watched in prayer. He watched through the activities he was involved in. Even us today as his servants, we need to watch for our master being involved in evangelism, being involved in literature distribution, being involved in visiting the sick, being involved in visiting those who are in prison, being involved in the mission, seeking and saving the lost. The best way to watch is to be preparing others for salvation. And our hands are all will be on the plow and our, our eyes will be watching in anticipation for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let him not come out of the most holy place when I'm not prepared. And one thing that we need to do, brothers and sisters, which the disciples failed to do, is to pray. Ministry of Healing, page 509, as we close, we too must have time set apart for prayer and meditation and for receiving spiritual refreshing. We do not value the power and efficacy of prayer as we should. For prayer and faith will do what no power on earth can do. That's Ministry of Healing, page 509. Brothers and sisters, prayer and faith will do what no power on earth can do. Therefore, let's watch and pray. 
our hands on the plow, doing those things which God has called us to do. And God in his mercy and love, he will fortify us to be able to wait, to be able to endure hunger, to endure delay, to endure suffering while we are waiting for his return. Shall we pray? Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. May you give us strength and power to watch and wait and to be involved in those things that give glory and honor to you while we are waiting for your soon return. Pour your spirit upon us, O Lord. Bless us, we beseech you in Jesus' name. Amen. Until then, brothers and sisters, may the Lord continue to bless you. I look forward to see you in the next edition by Friday. God blessing. Let's continue to pray for one another. Let's continue to encourage one another. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share the message, the link with colleagues and friends. God bless.